Hey everyone, I continue the story of my journey through Italy and if you haven't read my previous stories from Italy you can find it, so please check below the video and as I promised I will take you through Venice today I will show you my top favorite attractions and some hidden spots and thinking about mystical Venice I got hungry I'm happy that I don't have to pack again and because I will stay another two days and satisfied that I will have time to visit many exciting places and some of these places are top top attractions and some you could see if you just wander the streets and for me both options are always in circulation somehow I always like the diversity I had a quick breakfast and I wanted to go to town as soon as possible to start my tour. There is plenty of things I would like to see and the model is about maybe 10 minutes from the city center which was terrific. I have to admit that the weather served me well throughout my whole trip to Italy and through Italy. Um, everything is like it's meant to be, you know, as Paolo Coelho would say, the whole universe will be convinced that your dreams will come true. My choice of top 5 attractions to see in Venice are St. Mar Basilica, uh, Palazzo Ducale and Bridge of Salt. As well as the Pride Canyon and the uh, Ponte di Rialto. They are called the Rialto Bridge and the Galleria um, Giorgio Franchetti alla Cadoro. There is a few interesting facts about St. Marin Basilica. There are more than 85,000 square feet of mosaic in the St. Marin Basilica. There is 500 columns dating between the 6th and 11th centuries and lots of treasure was shipped to Basilica from the Crusade as well as the cool pieces of the mosaic in Basilica are the real gold. There is no better thing than wandering around the city without a map and we desire to see something new and observing people. You can see the difference between who is a tourist and who is a native there. Palazzo di Calle. There is few interesting facts about it, and this kind of Gothic architecture is a style of architecture that was quite popular in Europe during the High and Late Middle Ages. And this place has been burned down many times, um, as well as there was so many attempts to replicate the architecture of this place. Since 1567, the giant staircase is uh, guarded by San Savino's two colossal statues of Mars and Neptune, which represent Venice's power by land and by sea, and therefore the reason for its name. The Doge's Palace was the residence of the Doge, the ruler, and also housed the political bodies of the state. By the end of the 19th century, the building was showing 
clear sign of decay and the Italian government spent a lot of money to repair the building and that is why the public offices were moved elsewhere. The oldest part of the palace is the wing overlooking a lagoon and the corners of which are decorated with 14th century sculptures. What was amazing in the palace is that it is restructured in the 14th century. The chamber of the Great Council was decorated with a fresco by Variento and later with the works by the most famous artists of the period including Gentile da Fabriano, Pisanello, Alvise Viverini, Vittore Capaccio, Giovanni Bellini, Pordenone and Titian. 53 meters long and 25 meters wide, this is not only the largest chamber in the Doge's palace, but also one of the largest rooms in Europe. And here it is, the beautiful Grand Canal. Um, you can see the most of the city of the floating public transport system, calling Vaporetto. Ponte di Rialto, or Rialto Bridge, uh, is the oldest of the four bridges spanning the Grand Canal in Venice, in Italy, and every year millions of tourists cross it. The present more Ponte di Rialto was built in stone between 1588 and 1591 by Antonio da Ponte to substitute a wooden bridge which had collapsed in two occasions and had been partially burned down in 1310. The bridge is renovated and as an uh, architectural and engineering achievement of the Renaissance, it was designed and built by Antonio da Ponte and his nephew, Antonio Contino, following a design competition in the city. Rialto is known for its prominent markets as well as for monumental Rialto Bridge across the Grand Canal. Galleria Giorgio Franchetti alla Cadoro Today the courtyard of Cadoro is the result of a great work started by Baron Giorgio Franchetti 1865-1922 to towards the end of the 19th century. The Cadoro is a confident and assertive expression of his big family's wealth and social prestige. Uh, its construction cost approximately 7,000 decades. It has the most luxurious facade in Venice to date and the first made entirely of stone. Sorry, I don't have so many pictures. Actually, I have just this one. Um, I highly recommend this beautiful Gothic Galleria. If you have time to visit, just go ahead. What attracts me to cities like this, like Venice, are the little things that make the atmosphere magical and unreal. I believe that this, this is how people create many stories and fairy tales. And as the writers were inspired by night wandering through the streets. It's time to look at some gifts for my friends who helped me prepare for Italy. Uh, I don't have really room in my suitcase, so I decided to take the keychains um, symbolically. Somehow such a gift is small but also personal. It is exhilarating for me to find inspiring places and give me the energy to create something new. I managed to find some places in such a short time and now I will show you less known places in Venice or how people call them hidden gems and one of my favorites. There is four of them and let's go and see it. Libreria Aqua Alta in translation means high water bookshop and this aqua alta in general is mainly a natural phenomenon that happens in Venice. It is due to uh, the tides and it occurs especially when the high tide combines with the wind and the long waves. And this shop, um, bookstore actually, I found accidentally when wandering around Venice, tiny side streets. Uh, they have unique method of storing books. 
uh, which I really adore. It's beautiful arranged and bookshop is literally opens right on the canal. Um, staircase are made of damage, no longer usable books. And uh, also um, people in Libraria Aqualta, it's, uh, they made a home for plenty of cute and fluffy cats laying everywhere. There is more cute spots inside and uh, I would only recommend um, if you have enough time and if you go to Venice you need to explore next time and you will like it for sure if you like books. Burano. Burano is an island known for its brightly colored houses and traditional lace work. It is situated in the Venetian lagoon close to Venice and if you would like to visit it uh, you can by using the Vaporetto, what I mentioned before, a water bus or you can use the water taxi trip will, which will cost about 100 euros approximately. Before it was a fisherman village and it still is. Canal are filled with boats and the brightly colored houses line the sides of the canal uh, looks simply amazing and I think you should not miss uh, this city, this island and the Lace Museum which is located in Galupi Square. Also at Galupi is the main street in Burano and it's lined with restaurants, bars, pastry shops small groceries and so on. The very nice place in Galupi, it's a restaurant Galupi, where you can find lots of different kind of pasta, seafood pasta and seafood meals. And Cantina do Mori, uh, the Grand Canal is a mixture of ghostly tourists targeting places to eat, but if you really want to glimpse some local life, and Cantina do Mori is the really good spot for it. Um, this traditional Venetian hunt is so local that it doesn't even have tables, you know. Um, they're serving food and drinks at the long wooden bar. They usually serve light food or cicchetti, um, ranging form of tramezzini, crustle sandwiches filled with cured meat and cheeses to lightly fried artichokes hearts. Mix it with the local sweet wine, uh, usually red, is surprisingly refreshing on a hot day. Visit San Zaccaria flooded crypt. On it facade decorated in a mixture of Gothic and Renaissance style. There is no denying that San Zaccaria is a church worth visiting for its architecture by itself. However, um, its permanently floated crypt truly sets the church apart from the 200 and plus other churches in Venice. The water acts as a mirror and enchasing the salmon beauty of the crypt by making the columns appear twice as long and tombs appear to be floating. I think you should not miss uh, to see this spot because it's quite a uh, mystic and really special area for inspiration. Out of total of two and a half days in Venice, um, I managed to visit a lot of uh, nice lovely places and significant local sites um, in a really right way. It's time to go back to the hotel, I have to pack for the trip and I'm quite pretty tired. I want to make the most of this trip and tonight I will not go anywhere but take a shower, eat dinner, pack up and uh, go to bed. I think it's time to say goodbye to Venice, at least for now, and somehow I was affected by leaving Venice, but I will undoubtedly return. The trip from Venice to Verona didn't last long, maybe an hour and a half, so I didn't even stop for a break. I was amazed at how quickly I arrived, actually. I wanted to check in uh, to a small motel uh, where we rented a room, leave things and just go to the center for a walk. In time I talked to my friend and um, my friends, my mom and uh, including David, my mechanic, who 
I have to admit, checked every day to see if I was okay. That's really nice of him. And then he mentioned that I should check the oil in the engine. Of course, I didn't check the oil until he told me. I went to see the bike and it's a Sunday, summer, vacation time and shops rarely work. Everything was dry and I realized that I have no fuel as well, just a bit. So yeah, it was quite a fun time. And that's where my party ended positively. So I calmly drove to the city center to relax a bit and that's how my day in Verona started. So because of this problem I um, wrote a blog post, post about this journey as well and you can check in the link below which um, is talking also about some motorcycle safety tips which every rider should know just in case so if you are keen on to read more just uh, see the link below Verona is maybe you know maybe don't but best known for its Shakespeare Association and Romeo and Juliet stories um, but most of all, Verona is a busy town dominated by an exceptional, well-preserved first-century amphitheater. Every year, the city uses the venue for annual summer opera festival. And furthermore, I will reveal you the beauty of Verona and why she left such a strong impression on me. I parked in a lonely street full of trees and as I see the city of Novi Sad in Serbia, I also see Verona in Italy. A small town, beautiful packed, execute culture and fashion. A delightful feeling is in me when I just walk the streets um, of Verona. And everything is kind of excellent. You can feel some warmth in the air and a pleasant atmosphere and the beauty of the space and everything. In Venice it is more mystical, mysterious and romantic and Verona is somehow rurally romantic and full of loveness and some simplicity. The first thing I saw when I came out of the small street was the well-preserved first century amphitheater enormous construction and exquisite charm. It was La Traviata in the open air opera and I find out it starts in five minutes and has only two more tickets so next to that ticket office there was another one across the street and there was a man buying tickets as well so I thought he bought two tickets so if he bought it, I wouldn't be able to see the famous open air opera. I panicked, tried to explain to the woman that I really want it and I wanted access now as soon as possible and she realized I was in a hurry to grab the last ticket. So I was ready to see La Traviata. Enjoy a little bit in the show. It was enchanted by the stage, music, voice, costume design, all on the top and sky. It was unreal. It takes so little to make a person happy, at least me. Walking and collecting impressions, I re realized that I had not eaten anything for a long time. My appetite just opened up. And especially when I saw a restaurant where they serve pasta. Ah, that smell evokes so many memories. <laughs> I decided to order one of my favorite dishes. It's a seafood pasta and a glass of Sauvignon Blanc. 
the smell is fantastic and just the taste oh, terrific next week I will take you to the city known as the birthplace of the Renaissance home of great artists like Michelangelo and Donatello ruthless Catherine de Medici and one of the greatest artists of all times a sculptor, architect, engineer and genius and my favorite Leonardo da Vinci.